How would you like to build a really inexpensive house, have it super insulated, fireproof, and best of all, made of 85% free recycled material? Yes, this is a creative way to build. First, a big shout out to all of the pioneers on YouTube who have shared their successes and failures on Aircrete. Um, Hajar with Dome Gaia, Aircrete Harry, uh, Darwin with uh, Honeydew Carpenter, Little Tiny Giant, all you guys have been great inspiration and motivation for me to get me researching and experimenting over the past two years with this amazing product. At first I wanted to come up with a product that was as thick as shaving cream that I could just pump it right into the wall and fill it up for insulation. I quickly found that Aircrete is way too runny. You need a waterproof mold to work with it. Uh, there is a product called Aircrete with a K, and this is not a Portland-based product. This is a magnesium oxide-based product, and, uh, and it is not a do-it-yourself product. They, they've got a, a patent on this system their foaming gun uses little tiny beads glass beads with a grid they get super insulation out of our value on the product it's a great product but it's very expensive the other thing i wanted to try to do was reduce the cost of just pure portland cement and foam for the aircrete uh, that's not super expensive but i want to see if i can do better but everything that i added to the mix either made it more expensive or it didn't help the mix. I came close with a sand, builder sand and air crate. I got a real nice hard block out of this in my workshop and it is not nearly as insulated because so heavy, but I decided this would be good for the floor of my workshop that I was building, a 30 by 40 workshop. So I decided to do the first 10 by 40 section of this but when I started mixing it up, it was just collapsing. All the air was blowing out of the mix. The sand is just too heavy for the foam. Now, if, this, if I could have gotten builder sand in a powder form, I bet it would have worked just fine, but it won't work with builder sand. But when I was watching some videos on YouTube, I saw a Ukraine video of these guys mixing styrofoam beads in with concrete to make an insulated product. And I started thinking, you know what, that could really work well with aircrete. And then I found a mixer in India that had the foam generator uh, mixer and showed mixing styrofoam beads with it and then had a pump that you'd pump it into the wall which would be a wonderful setup, but I can't find anything like that here. We're just not building with Aircrete over here. So I started experimenting with shredded styrofoam, and that was the ticket. It is amazing how this came out. It makes a super light mix, very insulative. Aircrete can be finicky, so I'd mix a big batch in my mixer, I dumped it into a wooden trough that I had made, mounted on forks on my tractor. I'd haul it over to the building. I'd bucket it, put it up on my scaffolding, wheel my scaffolding over to where I'm working, hop up there, dump it into the wall, and then pack it with a packer. And I made a packer out of a fire, uh, plastic PVC tube mounted with a two by four block on the end and I would use that to pack it down into the mold. 48 hours, you can pop the molds off, uh, clean them up, oil them, and move them to the next section, and away you go with the next pour. Now, the wall is very lightweight and flimsy. You can run and push that wall over no problem at this point. You've got to get it covered with the fiber mesh and the stucco, and that is where you really get your strength. And uh, it's amazing how strong your wall is when you do that. So here is a three and a half inch thick Aircrete and part Aircrete styrofoam as I was doing an experimentation with it. And I covered it with roofing fabric 
and did a slurry coat stucco. That is all that this is. There's no steel, there's no wood or nothing in this, and that shows how strong this thing is at three and a half inches. The thicker it is, the stronger the wall would be. And at first, I was not gonna build a second story on it, but then I saw a really video of an elevator winch that you can put in an elevator in your shop. And I said, hey, I can do that, and that could open up storage upstairs if I can get it up and down. I was able then to build a second story, but I did not know if this was gonna be strong enough to hold it up. There's no wood, there is no rebar, uh, except for two, inch re two feet rebar that goes right into the ground to connect it to the slab. But I figured I could come in and put a two by four wall around the inside if it starts to crack. One year later, no cracks, it is holding up great. And so this is a great way to build. Now, I don't recommend that you build like this and put a second story on top of it. My next project is gonna be a garden shed. It's gonna be 12 by 20, and this time I'm gonna do an arched A-frame st style home. A dome house is one of the most efficient structures you can build, but it's a complex curved product. It's hard to make molds out of four by eight sheets and <clears throat> makes it hard to build this way. An arched A-frame just has an arch in one direction, so you can, you can have OSB sheets covering your mold this way. And I'll make it three and a half inches thick, but I'm gonna make trusses and I'm gonna rip two by four boards into two by one. So they're real thin and make a jig and bend each piece over there, put blocks and then another piece over here and nail them all together. And when you take it out of the jig, it'll hold that art. So here's what Aircrete Styrofoam looks like when you pour it in your molds. And you can cut it with a saw, multi-purpose saw, just really easy to work with. It's super light and very, very insulative. I did some R-value tests on this and it came out to 90% efficient of pure styrofoam. Pure styrofoam is around 3.6 to 4 R-value per inch. So I'm getting like 3.4 to 3.5 per inch with this, which is wonderful. Pure Air Crete is closer to 1.8 to 2.2 R value per inch. So much, much more insulative than Pure Air Crete. This is so easy to work with. You, I made a rasp out of, this is the regular metal that you typically put into a stucco wall. And I just bend it around the edges over here. And you can just sand your wall with this and take off inches and no, nothing flat. So if I end up with some bulges on this thing, I can just knock it off really easily with this. If you have a section that doesn't get packed in right in your mold, which I did have under my windows, because it's hard to get it all the way down under the window, I had a big void underneath it, and you can mix up a new batch and hand pack it into that hole let it dry and then sand it off at the end. It is so versatile. And there's so many things you can make with this. You can make your entire home, you can do an efficiency apartment, you can do garages, workshops, uh, well houses, dog houses, pool houses. You can even insulate your pool with it. You can insulate your concrete floor with it. Just so versatile. If you're into sculpting, you can do a big block and then carve out what you want on the thing and then cover it in clay for the final uh, design. So just so many different ways. And then there's a lot of different ways that you can build with it. You can do the forms like I did here and have it poured in place. You can do, um, make big giant Lego blocks that fit together with one another. And then if you make them hollow in the inside over there, then you can fiber mesh and stucco the outside and then put rebar and pour concrete in the middle, just like insulated concrete forms, make your own. For the roof panels, you could do um, OSB on one side and fiber mesh stucco on the bottom side for strength. And now you've got your nailing surface that you can nail shingles 
uh, on your roof. So just all kinds of cool ways that you can build with this. And you can do the truss system like I'm gonna do and then um, have, have that as your mold. And then you have some wood in the structure as a nailing surface. So if you wanna come in and put a sheetrock on the inside, if you want to put a metal roof on the top, you've got the wood every 24 inches in the aircrete styrofoam and you could screw it to that. Uh, ex exterior, if you wanna do some kind of siding on the exterior, you can do that. Clearly the cheapest way to do it is to stucco it. So I would do the, the aircrete stucco uh, first coat <clears throat> And that was the with the fiber mesh, and then I'd come with the one finished coat afterwards. I'm going to paint it, um, and that it'll be done. You can make trim out of styrofoam, and a lot of the styrofoam that you'll pick up will have um, be in, a, in about a three quarter inch thick, and you can rip it into one by sixes, and then you get sticky fiber mesh, which you cover over and stick it to the wall around your windows and doors stucco over it and can you can make some beautiful trim on the outside and you can paint that different color from the rest of the house just amazing if you're creative you can really make some gorgeous houses with stucco and it does not cost that much uh, i hope that this is a big motivator for folks all over the country to start recycling styrofoam and where do you find this stuff? You find them at furniture stores. And so you go around, make friends with all these furniture stores, and they are glad to get rid of it. And within two and a half hours or so, a circuit of about four around close to me, I can come back with a truckload of the stuff. And then you have to shred it. And I in, it came up with a really cool Bl giant blender that I made out of an electric lawnmower flipped upside down and, and put a plastic barrel Gorilla taped to the lawnmower. It works great. In four minutes, I've got 55 gallons of shredded styrofoam. And so you can make all kinds of cool projects out of this stuff that I like to call white gold. So if you're interested in building with this amazing stuff, I'm gonna shoot a lot more videos to show how to do this and subscribe to the channel and I'll notify you when I upload some new videos. So good luck with your projects.